It's a sad story, no matter how many times you see it play out. Another cold, bitter night on the city streets. A poor girl has got herself wrapped up with some bad characters and a dead body lying on the ground. So many mysteries. What's going on here? Why is this woman in trouble? And who's the stiff? And how'd they die? Well, I got half an answer to that. That's you. You're dead. And you're a ghost now. But you've lost your memories. So it's time to save the day and find out who you are, how you died, and how all these people are connected to you. Using your special spirit powers. Welcome to Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. Ghost Trick is a game originally released in 2010 for the Nintendo DS, now remastered and re-released for... uh... just about everything. It is an ambitious adventure mystery puzzle game, absolutely screaming with panache and personality, and I'm just going to say right up front that if you haven't played this game, you absolutely need to play this. This is one of the most unique and spectacular titles I've played all year, and I'm delighted to have finally gotten to play it after all this time. The premise of a dead person's ghost coming back to unravel the mystery of their killing and saving the loved ones around them might feel familiar in and out of the gaming landscape, even on the Nintendo DS, but like every good mystery, it's the execution that brings everything together. And that's exactly why you should probably see this for yourself, but I'll do the rest of the video now to show my working, as it were. Much of the gameplay of Ghost Trick is being presented a problem in an area, and needing to solve it using your ghost powers. You can possess objects, and manipulate some of them to perform various effects. Sometimes this will solve the problem, or it can help you manoeuvre through an area. Handy, since you can only move in a limited range from what you're currently possessing. It's a pretty simple system, but things get much more tricky with the use of your other power. Don't worry, dear. I've just the cure for instantaneous murder. You have the ability to go back to the moments before a person's death and change their fate. Obviously this doesn't work on you, otherwise the game would be five minutes long. But it is handy as it ends up bringing a whole new dimension to these puzzles. The element of time. Not only do you have a small window before your subject's life turns into an afterlife, certain situations will call for precise actions with precise timing within the scene. The effect is like constructing your own Rube Goldberg machine for every chapter, with each tiny piece working with one another in order to progress. Plus, the element of time travel means you can always restart and try again, freeing you up to experiment in some way. You'll never get stuck and unable to progress in this adventure game. <clears throat> I will say the puzzles in this game skew to the easy side of things though. If you're the type of hardened puzzler who has to unlock their bedroom door every morning by sliding a piece of paper underneath to catch the key, wait a minute, there's no keyhole here, then this will probably not do a lot to really grab you. There's hints aplenty in the game, and often a solution will just be one of only a few different options that are available to you. I will say it's not quite so easy as to sleepwalk through the game, and there is satisfaction to be had with some of the puzzles. But this is a case of personal taste. Some of you might be glad that it's hard to get properly stuck in this game, as there's nothing worse than an obtuse challenge that ends up killing a story's pacing dead. <clears throat> Which is a great segue to talk about Ghost Trick's narrative. And oh boy, we're getting into the effusive praise section of this video. Ghost Trick is so unbelievably smart and efficient at telling its story, knowing exactly when to sprinkle in some answers and raising a thousand more questions to keep you hooked. Engaging doesn't do this justice. I almost played this entire game in two sessions. Not because it's short, it's a good length I'd say, but because I could not put it down. How refreshing it is when I'm struggling to finish my big, long, ambitious games of the summer that are starting to lose me as I go further and further into them, and Ghost Trick comes out and practically embarrasses the whole class by being so much more simple, but so much more entertaining. Part of this is the absolutely fabulous amount of character that's on display at all times in this game. No doubt you've already noticed from my footage how wonderfully fun this world and its inhabitants are. Deliberate Deliberate care has gone into making sure that everyone in the game feels unique, with a personality and style all of their own. 
and as you'll be seeing new characters almost chapter by chapter, the light-hearted, almost jovial atmosphere that accompanies the tense conspiracy of the story is constantly changing itself around and thus never wears thin. Charm is everywhere in this game, with an absolutely eclectic cast who will probably remain in my memory forever. There's Lin, for example, who, despite attracting danger so much that dangerous liquids have a specific warning to not give them to babies or to Lin, has an overwhelming plucky determination to her. Lin does not say, she must do something for the greater good. She is already running to do it, consequences be damned. Her sunny spirit, always shining, even amidst the most terrible and hopeless situations, make her an absolute treat. Also, there is a dog in this game called Missile. Missile is an excitable Pomeranian owned by one of the characters in the story and is absolutely the best dog I have ever seen in a video game. You might like Final Fantasy XVI's Torgal, but you can't talk to him, can you? You can talk to Missile, and they are simply wonderful. I was aware of Missile's reputation before I bought this game, how everyone loved Missile, but it's only from seeing Missile for myself do I now fully understand why Missile is so loved. I now live with Missile in my heart forever. What's amazing about the rest of the cast too is that not only does everyone look different, but everyone also acts and animates completely distinct to one another. As a game where you'll be spending most of your time seeing characters walk through corridors and open doors time and time again, as you work on solving mysteries and averting terrible fates, what an inspired choice it was to give everyone their own unique animations to help them stand out. And I'm shocked just how hard they go with this. You can find out exactly what someone is about just from the way they move. The sheer amount of expression shown off through the animation is peak characterization. These were all animated by hand, and on the original DS version of the game, to preserve the fluidity of movement and detail of the character models on a teeny tiny cartridge, the animation frames of the 3D models were transferred into 2D sprites. Here in this remaster though, we get to see all the 3D models uncompressed and smooth, and it's just beautiful. The rest of the remaster also adds to the game's swish presentation, high definition graphics and character portraits, and a rearranged and uncompressed soundtrack, though you have the option to go back to the original if that's what you prefer. The soundtrack is amazing either way, I've been playing it throughout this video, you can hear how good it is. The remaster also comes with some optional bonus tile puzzles that were included in the mobile phone port that doesn't work anymore. They're pretty cute, I like the way they're animated. Yeah, I solved one. That's great. Oh wait, the achievement in the game is for solving the bigger versions. Uh, credit to you if you're into this, but I think I'm good. All of this is just me talking around the actual content of the story. Something I really don't want to spoil for those who have not played this. I'm not sure I can properly talk about all of its quirks succinctly because it's just so willing to go off and transform itself in weird and wonderful ways. You have the simple premise of solving your own murder and the game dive bombs off of it in what is one of the most cathartic and wonderful stories I've played in a long time. Even if I were to go through this game step by step like I've done with others, I don't think I'd be able to capture this game's madcap energy, mastery of tone, genuine emotional heart, and outrageous style. It is truly something I think you have to see for yourself, and I'm glad I finally got to. I'm gonna get personal and mushy now, just, just bear with me. Back when I was still a student, I woke up one day to find that my flat had been robbed while I was sleeping. The whole room had been trashed and flipped upside down as the thieves took everything they could carry, which turned out to be quite a lot after they also stole my university book bag and backpack. All my games and films were gone, my electronics too. The only thing they'd left behind was a PS3, thrown onto the ground with the network cable still plugged in. And amidst what was stolen, was my DS, which had a copy of Ghost Trick inside that I had just started that very week. This was in 2016, I'd been hearing about the game for years and after finally getting a copy, it was gone. When I think back to that time, one thing sticks out to me. Did they not steal my PS3 because they couldn't figure out you need to 
pinch the network cable to unplug it. They did the other cables okay, but that one... Oh, Jesus Christ, guys, come on, it's not that hard. I didn't buy a new DS after this. There weren't going to be any new games for that old system, and I saw no real point in buying a whole new console just for one or two games I had left. I did get to keep my Pokewalker, since that was in my room, so... Yay? I've been thinking about playing Ghost Trick ever since then, and now, seven years after that time, after playing the first few chapters and getting it torn away from me, I finally got to go through it. I honestly felt that disappointment was inevitable after inflating this moment in my mind for all this time after this stupid horrible event. But in case the preceding 1800 words haven't tipped you off, that is absolutely not the case. Ghost Trick lives up to and goes beyond my own expectations. I love this game. It might be my new favourite Nintendo DS game. If I did play the DS version? But because I didn't, it's still the world ends with you. The power is yet unknown. And that's why you should absolutely play Ghost Trick. I don't know anything else I can say to try and sell you on this absolutely incredible title. But fortunately, you can dip in and see for yourself what the game is about. There's a demo of the game, featuring the first two chapters of the story, and it's on every platform the remaster is on. PC, PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, the whole lot. You can play Ghost Trick for yourself and see if it appeals to you if you're still unsure after this whole video. And guess what? Missile is in the demo! You get to meet Missile for free! I saw a review on Steam that said this game was so good that it'll turn you into a walking advertisement for it. And you know, they're absolutely correct. So, for the final time, go play Ghost Trick. It's great, sharp, witty, unlike anything I've played before, and absolutely the best remaster of a DS game I've played. Listen, Piggy, you've got to admit, the controls are just simply not- yeah! Thank you for watching. Did you know this game was directed by Shu Takumi, who created Phoenix Wright? I've never played those games before. Maybe it's time. And an extra special thank you to my patrons, supporting me in making these videos. Patrons get access to my feed, letting people know what I'm working on, and can also ask questions in Q&A segments at the end of videos, which we'll get into right now. How does a typical day go for you? I kind of take everything as it comes. After my morning wake-up routine, I just go to wherever my scrambled brain takes me. Whether it's writing, editing something for a future project, or just playing something. For either work or pleasure. This stretches into the evening, where I have no idea when I'll actually get to sleep. Nighttime is where I can actually relax, I feel. Got a favourite track from the OST? There's some stiff competition. I think Lin's theme is fantastic, and I used the most of it in this review, but the song A Dashing Enigma, which I played for the last chapter of this review, might just be my favourite based on how it's used in the game. When you hear this, something has just been revealed to you that makes the whole mystery flip upside down, and I just feel myself falling deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole. God, I love it. Can you give Boris the treat? Sure. Oh, I was hoping for something smaller, I've only got these in, but these do happen to be his favourite. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah, I'll chew on that for a while. <laughs> 